Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> the daily problems of most teachers are not restricted to the ones they face at school. Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, is no exception to this rule. No, indeed. Many of my problems don't begin until I leave school, or before I start to school. This in spite of the fact that my home life consists of just A, my landlady, Mrs. Davis, and B, our cat, Minerva. Unfortunately, A is extremely absent-minded, and B is allergic to cat hair. <laughs> Last Friday morning, the three of us were having breakfast together. Careful, dear. Don't drink so fast or you'll get milk all over you. Thanks for reminding me, Mrs. Davis. May I have that napkin, please? Oh, here you are, Connie. You look pretty silly with your whiskers all white. <laughs> well, we wouldn't. Oh, oh, you're talking to Minerva. <laughs> yes. All finished, Minerva. <laughs> There's a good girl. Now go on into the kitchen and wait for me. <laughs> While you're out there, do the dishes. <laughs> All right, I'll do the dishes. <laughs> oh, don't bother, Connie. You better get ready to go to school. Walter Denton should be picking you up any minute. Of course, uh, you could dust the living room for me if you've got a minute. Those andirons I bought yesterday are pretty dusty. Andirons? But, Mrs. Davis, we haven't got a fireplace. That's what I told the salesman, Connie. But he carried them all the way up to our door by then. From where? From his car. He said it was his first time in this neighborhood. A door-to-door -door and iron salesman. <laughs> well, that's a new wrinkle. Yes, he was, Connie. And rather gray, too. <laughs> that's why I just had to buy them. You'll find the set over by the piano. There's a brush and a sifter came with them. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's burn the piano. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Davis. What you buy is your own business, but I don't like to see people take advantage of you all the time. Oh, but, Connie, nobody takes advantage of me. Certainly they do. You're always doing favors for somebody. And most of the time, they're practically strangers. Like that night you consented to sit for that couple down the street. You sat all right till five in the morning. But they couldn't find anybody else to stay with their children. A fine litter it was, too. Two sets of twins, eight months old and two years old. Oh, it wasn't so bad. They had a lovely phonograph, and I listened to music all evening long. It had a record changer and everything. You probably set a few changing records yourself that night. <laughs> Mrs. Davis, you've just got to learn how to say no to people. Oh. I guess I'm just an easy mark. Well, I'll get on with these dishes. Oh, that's probably Walter now. Coming! Yes? Miss Brooks, isn't it? I'm a neighbor of yours, Mrs. Evans. George and I live about a mile from here. Are you asking me or telling me? <laughs> uh, come in, neighbor. Oh, thank you. Come into the living room. Sit down, Mrs. Uh, Evans. Oh, you still don't know who I am, do you? Let's see. Belmont Laundry. Does that do anything to you? Well, they tear my slips once in a while. <laughs> oh, I knew that would do it. It is good to chat with you again, Miss Brooks. Again? When did you chat with me last, Mrs. Evans? Right after the holiday. The Easter holiday? No, dear. Last Thanksgiving. We were both at the Belmont Laundry to complain about the service. And on the way out, we had a conversation. I said, isn't this laundry getting terrible? And you agreed with me. Now do you remember? Of course. I just forgot some of the details. <laughs> well, I know you'll forgive me if I'm brief, Miss Brooks. I've been rather upset lately. It's George. It is? Yes, my husband, he isn't a bit well, and that's why we have to make this trip. The doctor seems to think that a week in the country will do him a world of good, so we're going upstate this afternoon. Molly has a farm up there, you know. It's a beautiful place. If there's one thing Molly knows, it's how to pick a farm. Oh, but she didn't pick it. Uncle Fred left it to Molly. But George is so attached to peanuts. And, well, Miss Brooks, for just this one week, will you take care of peanuts for us? Well, it's all according. How many bags of them are there? <laughs> no, you don't understand. Peanuts is our dog, the cutest thing you ever saw. And he's no trouble at all. I've got him right outside in our station wagon. Come on out and take a look at oh, him. Oh, but Mrs. Evans... We we'll take him with us, but Molly's afraid of dogs. Come along, Miss Brooks. I took the liberty of parking in your driveway. Yes, I see. 
Who's that at the wheel, your husband? No, that's Peanuts. <laughs> oh, did he drive you down? I mean, uh, what kind of a dog is that, Mrs. Evans? He's a Dane, of course. I should have known. He's built just like Loritz Melchior. Or... <laughs> Boy. How can he get out? The windows are closed. Well, he opens the door with his teeth. Oh. We taught him how, but he was just a little puppy, and he's never forgotten it. He's got a wonderful memory. He should have. His father was an elephant. I left a crossword puzzle up this tree. <laughs> Don't be afraid. He likes you. You see, he wants to make friends. He's talking to you. <laughs> Come on, come on, Peanut. There's a good dog. <laughs> Give Miss Brooks your paw, Peanut. No, thanks. I've got a couple. <laughs> Look, Mrs. Evans, I don't think we well, can... Well, let's go me. in the house now so I can give you a few last-minute instructions. Come on, Peanut. You might as well get used to your new home. You're going to be here for a week. Oh, but Mrs. Evans, I can't accept the responsibility for a dog this size. Besides, this isn't my house. I just rent a room here. Mrs. Davis owns the place, and she couldn't well, possibly I have a dog that... Well, I the dishes, Connie, and... Oh, I didn't know you had company. Who are these folks, Connie? <laughs> these folks, Mrs. Davis, are Mrs. Evans and her dog, Peanut. Mm. How do you do? So we meet again, Mrs. Davis. Again? We all take from the same laundry. <laughs> You know, I was just telling Miss Brooks here how little trouble Peanuts is around the house. He's really a lab dog, you know, but he doesn't require any special attention whatsoever. He'll eat some of whatever you eat, get up when you get up, and go to sleep when you go to sleep. I hope he's got his own toothbrush. <laughs> Look, Mrs. Evans, this cottage belongs to Mrs. Davis, and it's up to her. To... Oh, don't think about me, Connie. If you want this lovely dog, please take him. Good night, all. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Miss Brooks. And you won't be sorry. Peanuts is loads of fun. Well, I'd better be running along now. Oh, but where do we get in touch with well, you, you if Peanuts has... you won't have to get in touch with us. We'll contact you as soon as we return from the farm. Goodbye, my dear. Now you've done it, Mrs. Davis. I've done it. Why, Connie, Mrs. Evans is your friend. My friend? I only met her once in my life. Well, it's done now, Connie. Might as well make the best of it. By the way, where is the dog? Well, he's probably in the kitchen. The door is ajar. Well, that's funny. I left it closed. He opens it with his teeth. They taught him when he was a puppy. Come on. There was a whole leg of lamb on the stove, Connie. <laughs> well, that's right, Mrs. Davis. Peanuts, you didn't eat that whole leg of lamb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mrs. Davis, we can't afford to feed this dog. Not if we want to eat, too. Oh, that's Walter Denton, Connie. Shall I answer him? No, I'll let Walter in. Walter? Say, he hasn't got a dog of his own, has he? Not that I know of, Connie. A kid like that? I bet he loved the idea of taking care of peanuts for a week. His folks have a big backyard, too. It'd be just the thing. Coming, Walter! Now, whatever you do, Mrs. Davis, keep the dog out of sight until I've prepared him. Well, Walter Denton. Come in, Walter. Come in. Oh, thanks, Miss Brooks. I'd have been here sooner, but I was dog-tired this morning. That's a coincidence. <laughs> Walter, who would you say is a fella's best friend next to his mother? Stretch Snodgrass. Well, he's mine anyway. Why, Miss Brooks? I mean in the animal kingdom, Walter. Who is man's best friend? Well, out west they say a horse is. Right. And next to a horse? Uh, a dog, I guess. Right again, Walter. Now, what would you do if you could get an animal combining the best features of both? <laughs> don't get it, Miss Brooks You will, Walter For one week, I'm offering you absolutely free of charge The opportunity to look after, play with, and be a pal to a wonderful creature named Peanuts Peanuts? Oh, where is he? Right in the kitchen A friend of mine left him here, but, well, when I thought of how much bigger your backyard is I, I just couldn't help it I knew I'd have to make the sacrifice Call him, Walter, call Peanuts Well, if you say so, Miss Brooks Peanuts! Here, Peanuts! Walter, come down off that piano. <laughs> you haven't heard of flies. I'm not worried about his reaction to flies, Miss Brooks. Are you sure he won't bite? Positive. Come on now, just pet him. <laughs> he likes you, Walter. <laughs> now, give him your paw, boy. Go on. Give him your paw. 
Not you, Walter. <laughs> hey, he's all right. Oh, but I couldn't take him home even for a week, Miss Brooks. My folks have started a garden out in the back. A garden? Yeah, that's why I haven't got my own dog right now. Oh, I wish I knew what to do with him. Frankly, Walter, I just can't afford to feed him for a week. I've got an idea. How about leaving him at Snodgrass's pet shop? You know, stretch his old man. He's got all kinds of animals down there, and I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Perfect, Walter. Then when Mrs. Evans comes back, she can pay his food bill. Come on, Peanut. <laughs> oh, just one thing, Walter. I'd better drive today. You can sit in back with Peanut. In back? But there isn't room back here for both of us, Miss Brooks. Sure there is. He's a lap dog, Walter. You can sit in his lap. <laughs> Pet shop, Miss Brooks. We can. Oh, golly, I forgot. What? It's closed. Stretch told me his pop was going away for the weekend. Oh, that's just dandy. Now we'll have to take peanuts to school. To school? But, Miss Brooks, Mr. Conklin doesn't allow dogs at school. If he saw peanuts, he'd blow his top. Our beloved principal will just have to make an exception, Walter. Besides, this dog is completely outside of Mr. Conklin's jurisdiction. Well, what do you mean, Miss Brooks? He happens to be a Danish citizen. <laughs> Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Here's wonderful news, ladies. Wonderful, wonderful news. Now there's something thrillingly new in Palm Olive Soap's famous beauty lather. Yes, something thrillingly new. Palm Olive's famous beauty lather now brings you new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Millions of women will prefer beauty lather Palm Olive over all other leading toilet soaps the minute they try it. For Palm Olive Soap's famous beauty lather now has a new, clean, flower-fresh fragrance for new allure, new charm. So ladies, forget all other beauty care and use palm olive soap the way doctors advised for a lovelier complexion. Just stop improper cleansing and instead wash your face with palm olive soap three times a day, massaging palm olive's wonderful beauty lather onto your skin for 60 seconds each time to get its full beautifying effect. Then rinse. That's all. All types of skin, young, older, oily, respond to it quickly. Don't wait another day to try Palm Olive's Beauty Lather. You'll be thrilled by its new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Thrilled again by the fresher, brighter complexion doctors prove may soon be yours. For new loveliness all over, use big, bath size Palm Olive in tub or shower. <laughs> In spite of my enforced bravado, I was pretty squeamish about getting peanuts into school without Mr. Conklin finding out about it. Fortunately, we were early, and while Walter parked his car, I was able to hustle the dog into the supply room with a minimum of incident. Of course, a few students we did encounter in the halls will spend the remainder of their adolescence with hanging jaws and bulging eyes, but <laughs> that was unavoidable. Stretch Snodgrass, Madison's star athlete, known to the faculty as the body beautiful and the head empty, <laughs> was in charge of the supply room when Peanuts and I arrived. Oh, hi, Miss Brooks. <coughs> quiet, quiet. This is Peanuts, Stretch. Oh, I didn't notice him. Nice pooch. Pooch? <laughs> well, you're not seeing him at his best, Stretch. He usually carries a barrel around his neck with a St. Bernard in it. <laughs> We've got to keep him out of sight. Mr. Conklin mustn't find out that he's in school. Oh, he won't. Mr. Conklin's at the doctor's office. Harriet told me when she gave me the key to the supply room. Her father's getting tested for aller... Aller... Allergies? Yeah. He won't be in for an hour yet. Harriet said she talked to him on the phone, and he's half shot. Translation. <laughs> he's only through with half the shots the doctor's giving him. Yeah. But don't worry about peanuts, Miss Brooks. I'll keep him right here in the supply room. Oh, look, Miss Brooks. He's scratching his own back. Isn't it cute? He smiles while he does it. <laughs> Don't you? I wonder what he's got back there. Well, it's probably just a mild case of hives. Well, it's certainly clever the way he takes the hives with one paw and beats them to death with the other. <laughs> You'll make a great watchdog if I have to leave this place for anything. Can you imagine what a gag it'd be if somebody just wandered in to snitch a pencil or something? Yeah, a great gag. They'd probably get hysterical permanently. Uh... 
I've sent for you, Miss Brooks, because I feel that you, of all the personnel at Madison, can keep a cool and level head in time of crisis. Well, thank you, Mr. Conklin, but I'm what is... I'm trying to be calm myself, Miss Brooks. And I shall make every effort to acquaint you with the facts in as brief and concise a manner as is possible. Yes, sir. First of all, I returned from the doctor's office about an hour ago. Some allergy shots. I was jotting down some possible prizes for the community chest raffle and found myself in need of another notebook. Yes, Mr. Conklin? Pending your opinion, Miss Brooks, I have so far failed to notify the police or fire departments. It is my belief that if we can successfully avoid any and all panic, we can ourselves remove the student body and faculty to a place of safety from this danger. What danger? Miss Brooks, there's a leopard in the supply room. <laughs> oh, is that all? I mean, that's impossible, Mr. Conklin. Impossible? But I tell you, I saw it. Mr. Conklin, you said yourself you've just had some shots. Uh, isn't it possible that what you saw could have been an illusion? Miss Brooks, I slammed the door on the creature as soon as I saw it. But not until I'd gotten a good look. When I think of those slavering jaws, what they could rend. What they've already rendered. Uh, rent. <laughs> that is, I'm sure the shots you had come something... come with me, Miss Brooks. I'll prove to you the shots had nothing to do with it. For the life of me, I don't comprehend. Miss Brooks, what do you suppose that leopard is doing in the supply room? Maybe he ran out of something. <laughs> Careful, Miss Brooks. That puny dog could never hold him if he becomes enraged. Let's tiptoe up to it and listen to the beast. When I'm calling you... <laughs> The beast hasn't got a bad voice. Oh, Stretch, it's us. Mr. Conklin and I. Open up. Okay. Hi. Where is it? Where's what, Mr. Conklin? The beast. It was a big... It had... Oh. How long have you been in this room, Snodgrass? Me? Oh, right along, Mr. Conklin. All morning. You see, Mr. Conklin, it was those shots after all. Now, why don't you go back to your office and lie down for a while? But I, I can't understand it. I saw him as clearly as I see you. Clearer. Maybe I'd better get back to my office at that. A lot to do today. I've still got to find a suitable prize for that raffle. Maybe I'll call my doctor. Yes, that's what I'll do. I'll call the doctor. That's what I'm going to do it. The doctor. Stretch. Stretch. Quick, Stretch. Get him out from under and let's go. Get who out from under what, Miss Brooks? Peanuts. You hid him, didn't you, when I told you that Mr. Conklin was with me? Oh, no, Miss Brooks. Peanuts blew. He blew? <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to admit it in front of old man Con... Uh, Mr. Conklin. But I left the supply room for about ten minutes, and when I got back, the dog had taken a powder. He could use some powder. <laughs> oh, but this is terrible, Stretch. We've got to find him before Mr. Conklin sees him again. You'd better go directly to the cafeteria and look for him. Cafeteria? But it isn't lunch period yet, Miss Brooks. For him, it's lunch period all day. <laughs> Some of our younger students are still pretty tender, you know. I'll look in Mr. Boynton's biology laboratory. Maybe something in the lab attracted peanuts. I know there's something that attracts me in there. <laughs> now, suppose you get going, Stretch. Okay, Miss Brooks. I'll report back to you if I find him. Yes, do that, Stretch. I'll just close up oh, this supply... Oh, excuse me, Miss Brooks, but I just ran into Daddy in the hall. He's very overwrought. Well, that's better than being underwrought. <laughs> Your father's just a little nervous, Harriet. He's been to the doctor, you know. Yes, I know. That's why he asked me to tell you that you've got to pick out a prize for the community chest raffle tickets we sold last week. Me? Yes. The drawings this afternoon. Get her on, Harriet. Right now, I've got to see a real man about a real dog. Excuse me, Mr. Boynton. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, not at all, Miss Brooks. I, I was just going to have a little snack. Brought some milk and pastry from home. It's Danish. Danish? Well, don't bite it till you see if it's wearing a license. <laughs> Oh, skip it, Mr. Boynton. Do you mind if I look around the lab? No, Miss Brooks, but what are you looking for? I'd rather skip that, too, Mr. Boynton. If I tell you, you'll only give me an incredulous look and say, why did you do a crazy thing like that? No, I won't, honestly. Well, I lost a dog. It's a Great Dane, Mr. Boynton. I brought him to school this morning. You brought a Great Dane to school? Why did you do a crazy thing like that? <laughs> I knew it. But it's too late for explanations now, Mr. Boynton. I've got to find him. Of course. And I'll do everything I can to help you. But let's approach this problem in a scientific manner. Take the habits and customs of the creature and, and go from there. 
Fine, but do you know the habits of a Great Dane? Well, Miss Brooks, I'm a biologist, if I say so myself. I know the habits of animals from A to Z. Or perhaps I should say from aardvark to zebra. <laughs> That's a little joke we scientists like to tell. Well, tell it later on, will you? <laughs> right now, we've got to find Peanuts. That's his name. Oh, well, the Great Dane, also called Boarhound, has a keen sense of smell. He is an excellent dog for hunting. I know. I've been hunting this one all morning. <laughs> uh, tell me, Miss Brooks, where was he when you last saw him? In the supply room. Mm-hmm. Now, now, let's consider for a moment the Dane's remarkable sense of hearing. It's five times greater than a man's, you know. Do you think he might have heard anything that made him run away? Just the one about the aardvark and the zebra. <laughs> Please, Mr. Brooks, I'm trying to help you. The Dane was originally developed to hunt boars, hence the name Boarhound, and he was a cross between... Oh, pardon me, Mr. Boynton, but you've just given me a very important lead. You say the Dane likes to hunt boars. That's correct. Then all I have to do is put myself in his place. Now, if I was hunting for a boar, where would I go? Well, I'm sure I don't know. I do. I'd go to the office of the biggest boar at Madison. Mr. Conklin, here I come. <laughs> come in. Uh, hello, Mr. Conklin. Could I talk to you for a moment? I suppose so, Miss Brooks. Sit down. This has been a trying day for me, a very trying day. Yes, I know, Mr. Conklin. They haven't been able to isolate my particular allergy, and the doctor says it may take some time. Excuse me. Hello, Mr. Allergy speaking. <laughs> Conklin. Hello, Mr. Conklin. This is Mrs. Davis. I wouldn't disturb you at school like this, but it's terribly important. I've got to speak to Miss Brooks. Oh, she's right here, Mrs. Davis. It's for you. Thank you. Hello, Mrs. Davis. Hello, Connie. I've just some distressing news for you. Mrs. Davis called and said her husband's doctor discovered that he's allergic to dog hair. Mrs. Evans? What? Naturally, they can't keep peanuts any longer. So Mrs. Evans told me to tell you that he's yours. Mine? Oh, but I can't... Where is Mrs. Evans? I'll call her back. I'm afraid that's impossible, Connie. They've just left town for the summer. Left town? But, well, I'll talk to you about it later on, Mrs. Davis. Thanks, if you'll forgive a lie, for calling. Everything all right, Miss Brooks? Huh? Oh, yes. Everything is dandy, Mr. Conklin. Good, good. Now, about this prize for the community chest raffle, I've been racking my brain. H have you been able to think of anything? I... <laughs> what did you say, Miss Brooks? <laughs> Me? I didn't say anything, Mr. Conklin. What did you say? I said... I said... I thought that's what you said. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, I think I've got the answer to both your problems. What? What? <laughs> well, first, your allergy. Mr. Conklin, do you hang your coat in the closet over there? Oh, uh, yes, I do. And did you wear a tan top coat to school today? That's right. How tall is it? Tall? Has it got soft brown buttons? Uh, yes, I think they're brown. With long eyelashes? <laughs> Miss Brooks, what are you trying to... Grip the arms of your chair tightly, Mr. Conklin. Uh, Peanuts! Here, Peanuts! <laughs> Take it away! Take it away! <laughs> this is Mr. Conklin. Meet Mr. Conklin, Peanuts. Mr. Conklin, shake hands with the first prize in the community chest raffle. <laughs> As our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Only luster cream brings you K. Dumas' magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster Cream. Not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable. Gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. 
and be a dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, the drawing for the grand prize occurred in assembly that afternoon. Uh, Attention, everyone. Quiet. Quiet, please. Quiet. I'm happy to say that every member of the student body and faculty has contributed something to our community chest drive. And as we promised, there will be a prize for the holder of the winning number, which is... 644. Miss Brooks, let's see your stub. My stub? Oh, don't be silly, Walter. I never won a raffle in my life. Well, you've just... won this one. Oh, 644. Oh, no, There's Walter. a winner right here, Mr. Oh, Conklin. Can't... It's Miss Brooks. Oh, well, well, congratulations, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to say? Just one thing, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler. Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Leonard Smith, Mary Jane Croft, and Pinto Colbeg. <laughs> Men, do you shave with a lather or brushless shave cream? Plum Olive shaving cream comes both ways. And whichever way you prefer to shave, you'll find that using either Plum Olive brushless or Plum Olive lather shaving cream can bring you more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Here's the proof. 2,548 men tried the new Plum Olive way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they had shaved before, three out of every four got more comfortable actually smoother shaves. Get Palm Olive Brushless or Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream today. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. One good reason to be proud we're Americans is that we're always free to tell our government how we feel about its actions. But let's not forget that freedom is everybody's job. All of us must work to keep our individual rights and freedoms by voting in an informed way so that the best men and women are placed in office. We must serve willingly on juries and public committees and take an interest in the development of our community, state, and country. For by being better citizens, we can show the world that America is a strong, successful democracy.